In this section, we will talk about identity and access management. What is this? What are identities? How are they accessed? So here we'll talk about IAM. Then we will cover concepts like single sign-on, federation and attestation, multi-factor authentication, and password management. So what is identity and access management? In cybersecurity, it's a set of technologies used by organizations to manage access to their applications, data, and more. So you want to know who is accessing your, your content, your applications, your data, and it's important to manage all that. Usernames, passwords, device names, and all. This is used to ensure that only the authorized people have access to the resources you need. When you log into your account on YouTube, on Facebook, on Gmail, it's important that the username and the passwords match and that the data that is in your account correspond to your username and password and not someone else's. All of that works through something called IAM, identity and access management. So verify your identity and verify that you have the right access. This is essential for maintaining security and integrity of organization's resources so that those people who don't have access or are not authorized access cannot access those resources. First, we start with authentication. We have all authenticated before in different systems, on YouTube, on Zoom, on Facebook, on, the, on our phones. What is authentication? This is when you determine where someone is who they actually say they are. So determining whether someone is who they say they are, how can it be done? With a user ID, when you provide credentials like username and password or PIN number or more, and we will see the different types of authentication. So this is important to keep networks secure by allowing only authenticated users to gain access to resources. Just like when you have a key card to access a, a specific room, or when you want to enter a building, you show your badge to the security guard. When you want to access digital systems, you enter your username and your password. You authenticate. You prove that you are who you say you are. I am the senior manager. This is my badge. This is my PIN number, etc. So you need to authenticate because if you didn't authenticate, then everyone would have access to resources. In cybersecurity, there are some few terms you need to know within IAM. First, there is authentication, which we just talked about. Only authorized entities gain access to resources. Then you have multi-factor authentication. Here you add an extra layer of security to the regular authentication. So in addition to providing a proof like a password or another method of authentication, you add a second factor. It can be a PIN number on the phone. It can be a code on an app. It can be a, a birthday. It can be something different. So you provide two different factors and we will see the different types of MFA authentication in, in the next video. Provisioning is the process of creating user accounts and granting them access to resources. For example, when you are new to an organization, you're given an email, you're given new software on your phone, you're given some access to different resources. That's a process of provisioning. Meanwhile, deprovisioning does the opposite. They're removing your user accounts from the systems. They're removing the access you have to resources, either when you go to another organization or you're on a, you're on a leave. Identity proving is verifying the identity of users during the account creation process. But when you're creating your account, usually there are some systems that will ask you to provide your a scan of your face to make sure that you are who you say you are and to verify your driver's license, for example. That's the process of identity proofing. There are usually knowledge-based questions, document verification, biometric verification. There are several methods for this. Permission assignments is assigning specific permissions to users based on their roles. If you're a manager or if you're an intern, you don't have the same permissions. It depends on what role you have in the organization, and that's how it's it's carried out. And it's ensuring least privilege by granting only the necessary permissions to perform job functions. So someone who is at the lower level in the organization will not have as much privileges as someone who is at a higher level. The person at the lower level only gets the necessary permissions to perform their job functions. The person at the higher level gets more permissions than the person at the lower level, but still necessary to perform their job functions, not everything. A very important concept in IAM is the concept of single sign-on, SSO. Single sign-on, what is this? 
This is a method of authentication that enables users to authenticate with multiple apps by using one set of credentials. So you only need to remember your username and password and you have access to multiple applications. For example, here you have Kevin who is signing into his Google account. And what happens when you sign into your Google account? What do you have access to? You have access to Gmail, you have access to Google Docs, you have access to Google Drive, Google Maps, Google Sheets, YouTube, and a lot more Google products. That's the process of single sign-on. So you sign in once and you have access to multiple apps within the same uh, platform or organization. Imagine if you had, if you needed to authenticate every time you had access to access Gmail and then Google Maps and then Google Drive, and then every time you needed to authenticate, that will be too time consuming. But with SSO, you just need to authenticate once and it reduces the number of passwords users have to remember. And you don't have to authenticate all the time and all the time. This is also common in university platforms, in college platforms where you log in into your college account and you have access to multiple systems. To register for courses, to, to see your course platform, university information and more. Many, many organizations also have single sign-on. You sign in once, you have access to multiple resources. For example, with Facebook, you sign in on Facebook, you can access Messenger, Marketplace, and multiple other Facebook products. A concept that's a little bit similar to SSO is federation. Federation is the process where you're establishing a trust relationship between different organizations to enable access to resources with a separate set of credentials. How does this happen? Suppose you want to log into a new account, for example, on, on zoom.com. So you go and you sign in with your account on zoom.com. When you want to sign in, you can either enter an email address and a password, or you see these options, sign in with SSO, with Apple, with Google, with Facebook. This is the process of federation. So it allows users to use their, their access resources in one domain and their identities from another trusted domain. But what happens is like, when you see this signing with Google, with Facebook, you can actually sign in with your Google account into Zoom or with your Facebook account into Zoom. So what you're doing is you're creating a trust relationship between the different organizations, a trust relationship between Zoom and your Facebook or Google. So how does this happen? Here is an illustration. Here you have Crystal who is requesting a service from Zoom, just like we just saw. And it says login with Facebook, login with LinkedIn, login with uh, Google Plus or different accounts. So what she does is she logs in with her LinkedIn. So she authenticates on LinkedIn and then eventually a trust relationship is created between Zoom and LinkedIn. So that's federation, trust relationship between different accounts. All right, guys, that concludes our course for today. Let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed it. And make sure to follow us on all our social media platforms, which includes YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Of course, do not forget to order our awesome Amazon flashcards that you can get for just $15. And they're awesome because they help you study.